The Fertile Crescent refers to an area in the Middle East that fostered some of the world's earliest civilizations. It was in this area, 10,000 years ago, that one of at least two domestication events took place, leading to the 1,000-some breeds of domesticated cattle that exist today. Domestic cattle are members of the tribe Bovini, which contains no less than 15 other species, collectively referred to as wild cattle. Many of these species are paired with both domestic and wild counterparts and share a ginormous range covering most of the world. The majority of the individual species are located in Asia, while the distribution of domestic cattle stretches across the globe. Our journey begins just north of the epicenter in one of the world's most challenging environments. The average altitude of the Tibetan Plateau exceeds 14,000 feet, and the mountains to the south rise to 29,000 feet at the peak of Mount Everest. There are very few animals that can survive at these altitudes, but thanks to their thick hair, large lungs, a high red blood cell count, and high levels of hemoglobin, a protein found in red blood cells responsible for transporting oxygen, yaks are not only well adapted to this region, but played a vital role in human settlement. There are considered by some to be two species of yak, one found in the wild and the other domesticated. Wild yaks are generally darker in colour and are much larger than their domestic counterparts. Fully grown males can weigh up to 2200 pounds and spend most of their time separated from female herds, which can number as many as 200 individuals. The wild yak is classified as vulnerable, with less than 10,000 individuals remaining when it was last assessed in 2014. It is present exclusively on the Tibetan Plateau, and while the domesticated yak is also found mostly in Tibet, their range stretches into the surrounding countries. The domestication of the yak is thought to have occurred after cattle, somewhere between 5 to 10,000 years ago, on the borderlands of the Tibetan Plateau. They are highly valued in local culture and are able to fulfill a wide range of needs for the Tibetan people. Their dung is used as fertilizer and fuel, and in addition to providing meat, their milk can be harvested and is also used to produce cheese. These strong animals are also capable of carrying heavy loads at high altitudes and are used for the trek to Mount Everest base camp. Yaks can be crossbred to produce hybrid breeds. The Zo or Zomo, depending on sex, is created by crossbreeding yaks with cattle. These hybrids offer the best of both worlds, boasting higher milk yields and a more docile nature, while still being well suited to high altitude living. Just south of this epic alpine region, our next species exhibits a different but no less intriguing style of living. The wild water buffalo is found in wetlands and tropical or subtropical forests. Although these animals are terrestrial, due to a low number of sweat glands, they are heavily dependent on water to maintain their body temperature. As such, they spend a great deal of time submerged in water and are also known to wallow in mud holes, a behavior that is also thought to reduce insect bites. These bovids are ginormous, with males weighing up to 2,600 pounds and females about two-thirds the size. While the number of wild water buffalo is thought to be just 2,500 mature individuals, their domesticated counterparts are far from that number. The domestic water buffalo has been bred for specific agricultural and work purposes and as such is smaller than those found in the wild. These incredibly strong bovines are essential in many Asian countries where they are used for a variety of purposes. As draft animals they help to plough rice paddies and other agricultural land. This work can either be done with a single buffalo or with multiple individuals using a yoke. This usually amounts to a long piece of wood attached to both animals to ensure the force they generate is concentrated in a single direction. Their milk is also highly valued and is used to make a variety of other products, including buffalo mozzarella in Italy, a country that is home to around 400,000 Italian Mediterranean buffaloes. There are estimated to be roughly 160 million domestic buffalo found in large populations in Egypt and Asia most heavily concentrated in Pakistan and India, where we meet a highly regarded species of domesticated cattle. In the 2011 census, approximately 80% of India's population identified as Hindu, a religion that holds all living creatures in high regard, 
but where few are revered as much as the cow. These gentle giants are associated with many Hindu deities and are considered a representation of all living creatures. They are seen as kind and generous, giving much more than they take from the world, while also being respected for their strength. In India, it is not uncommon to see cows roaming freely in the streets, and they often play a central role in festivals and ceremonies. The cattle found in this part of the world exhibit a hump on the top of their shoulders, which is one of several characteristics of Zebu or Indusine cattle. One of the most famous breeds is the Gir, which is used for both dairy and meat production and exhibits a range of colours from a deep reddish brown to white or a mottled mixture of the two. Zebu breeds are better able to maintain their milk yield and growth rate in the tropics thanks to a higher heat tolerance than taurine cattle. They are considered to be a separate species from those from the Fertile Crescent, originating from a separate domestication of wild aurochs that took place in the Indus Valley, which is centred around modern-day Pakistan. Most studies point to cattle entering Africa from both domestication events in Asia. However, there are some that suggest there may have been a third domestication event on the African continent. Either way, Sangha cattle is the collective name given to the indigenous cattle of sub-Saharan Africa, all of which have played an important role in local culture for many thousands of years. Pastoralism is defined as the practice of herding as the primary economic activity of a society, and few groups embody this way of life as much as the Maasai. Sustenance centres around dairy products, blood and meat produced from their cattle, and being nomadic or semi-nomadic, their location throughout the year depends on the best grazing conditions for their animals. Cattle are also used as currency in Maasai society, with the most wealthy families owning the largest amount of cattle. Maasai territory sits to the east of Lake Victoria, and to the west is the range of a particularly influential cattle breed. Ancoli cattle are characterised by their deep red coloration and exceptionally long horns. Bulls can weigh over 1,500 pounds, and cows are a little smaller at around 1,100. The name Ancoli can either refer to a single breed or a group of breeds from Eastern and Central Africa. This breed is now particularly popular in North America after being imported from European zoos in the 1920s and 30s. The Ancoli Watusi International Registry was formed in the United States in 1983 to protect and promote the breed. West Africa is also home to several unique breeds, one of which is native to the area around Lake Chad. Kuri cattle are also known for their large horns, which can be either thinner and longer, reaching several feet in length, or shorter and bulbous in shape, which is quite unique. While there are many African cattle breeds south of the Sahara, there is just one wild cattle species that shares a similar range. Despite the close relation to its domestic cousins, the African buffalo is considered highly dangerous to humans due to its size, weighing up to 1,900 pounds, its temperament and its gigantic horns, which can span up to one metre on the largest bulls. Not surprisingly, all attempts to domesticate this species have proven unsuccessful. On the other hand, it is these characteristics that make the African buffalo a formidable prey animal. Lions, leopards, hyenas and wild dogs are the most common animals to prey on the buffalo, who band together in large herds for protection. Although herd size varies drastically depending on habitat, they can be as large as thousands of individuals, including both males and females. Calves are born throughout the year, although this is most common at the end of the wet season, and young are defended vigorously by the mother and herd. Most African buffaloes are found in the grassland habitat south of the Sahara, but the forest biome is also utilised by one of its subspecies. The African forest buffalo, also known as the dwarf or Congo buffalo, exhibits a reddish-brown coloration and is much smaller than the other subspecies, weighing up to 700 pounds. Their herds are also much smaller, numbering 3 to 30 individuals, and usually contain just one male with a harem of females and their young. Buffalo have a close relationship with several birds, including two species of oxpecker. These birds feed on the ticks that collect on many of Africa's large animals, a relationship previously thought to be symbiotic. However, a study published in Behavioral Ecology showed that oxpeckers can actually exacerbate wounds, 
remove earwax and have a questionable effect on tick load choosing ticks that are already filled with blood. Much like in Africa, cattle play an important role in European culture and are concentrated most heavily towards the central and western part of the continent. Europe's temperate climate makes it most suitable for taurine cattle and today there are almost 500 taurine breeds found across the continent. Cattle play an integral role in many European countries, with an estimated 75 million bovine livestock present throughout the European Union in 2022, as well as playing a role in other customs dating back many centuries. One of the most heartwarming festivals in Europe takes place on a yearly basis in the countries of the Alps. It is known by a few names including Almabtrieb, which roughly translates to driving down the mountain. These festivals centre around cattle drives that move livestock from their summer grazing areas in the mountains to their stables where they spend the winter and celebrate their safe return. In these alpine communities, many of the cattle wear cowbells, which are used to keep track of cattle roaming across the vast pastures of the Alps, a tradition that dates back to the 1300s. The Cattle of Europe could be a separate video in and of itself, featuring some of the world's most famous breeds. However, we'll conclude this portion to the south in Italy, where one of the oldest breeds can be found. Chianina cattle were historically bred as draft animals and lauded for their size and power. The largest Chianina ever recorded was a bull named Donetto in 1955. He weighed 3,800 pounds, which at the time was the heaviest bull in the world. Perhaps the most interesting breed in Europe is the Zubron, a hybrid created by mating domestic cattle and our next species of bovine. The European bison or wissent is roughly the same size as a wild yak, also weighing up to 2,200 pounds. With a conservation status of near threatened, their population now sits north of 2,500, but this wasn't always the case. This species once roamed throughout much of Europe and into Asia, but slowly declined to just 600 individuals just before World War I. After the war, just nine bison remained in Poland's Białowieża forests, all of which were taken into captivity, and in 1927 they became extinct in the Caucasus. The following year, a breeding program was set up in Białowieża, and thanks to conservation efforts, populations slowly began to resurge to the numbers we see today. In the winter, males live separately from the females. Some live solitary lives, and others can be found in small male groups. Like deer and other ruminants, these animals are subject to a rutting season, which runs from July through October, and is the time of year where males join the female herds and compete with each other to secure mating rights. European bison are found in isolated pockets across Central and Eastern Europe, and are separated by the Atlantic Ocean from their closest relatives, who are found in the contiguous United States, Western Canada and Alaska. North American bison are some of the most treasured animals in the United States, and like their European counterparts, their population size has varied drastically over the years. At the turn of the 19th century, the American Midwest had experienced many centuries of high rainfall and cooler temperatures. Bison were plentiful and were an important resource for Native American tribes who refer to them as buffalo. As the 19th century progressed, bison were increasingly hunted at numbers between 15 to 25,000 per year. Overhunting, combined with a drier climate and increased competition from other grazing animals such as horses, brought this species to near extinction by the end of the 19th century. This culminated in 1894, when the only wild herd remaining existed in Yellowstone National Park, founded just 20 years earlier. Today, this species is listed as near threatened, with a population of mature individuals in the wild numbering between 11 to 13,000 when it was last assessed in 2022. This number, however, is dwarfed by the estimated 400 to 500,000 bison that exist in private and commercial herds as domestic livestock. The American bison is most well known for one of its subspecies, the Plains bison, which is found both on the grasslands of the US and southern Canada and in several herds in Alaska, but also has one other subspecies, the wood bison, which is larger and exhibits a more distinctive hump on the shoulder. As such, the wood bison is considered the largest terrestrial animal in North America, 
and is found mostly in the boreal forests of northern Canada. North American bison are also crossbred with cattle, a breed referred to as beefalo, which provides a nice segue into the world of North American cattle. The cowboy is one of the most iconic figures in American history, rising to prominence during the 19th century. However, seldom mentioned is the influence of the OG North American cowboys from Mexico. Vaqueros, ostensibly portrayed taking on multiple grizzly bears in this painting, practiced the tradition of cattle herding long before the days of Buffalo Bill. It was from the vaqueros that the pioneers learnt the art of cattle herding in Texas, or Tejas, which used to be part of Mexico. This is also where one of America's most famous cattle breeds, the Texas Longhorn, finds its roots. Longhorn cattle were brought to the Americas by the Spanish in the 1500s. By 1860, the population had grown so large that cattle drives were organized to move the Longhorns north to supply the rest of the country. However, by the 1900s, as transport improved, the breed became less popular and their numbers started to dwindle. In 1941, the state of Texas created their own official herd, and today these incredible bovines are treasured by proud Texan farmers and the public alike. In addition to North America, cattle also played an important role in South American history, and in terms of density, this continent is one of the world's cattle hotspots. The number of cattle in Brazil alone is well over 200 million heads. The country is second only to the United States in terms of beef production, and is the world's largest exporter. Taurine breeds were brought to South America by the Spanish between the 16th and 17th centuries, but this country is mostly home to Indocine cattle that were introduced in the 19th century and led to the development of the Nailori. The first two cows are said to have arrived from India aboard a cargo ship bound for England in 1868. Over the decades, this breed has become increasingly popular and today around 80% of cattle in Brazil are either Nailori or hybrids of the breed. It should come as no surprise then that cowboy culture is alive and well in South America. In particular, gauchos have been the backbone of South American cattle ranching since the 18th century, especially in Argentina, Uruguay and southern Brazil. Historically, they played important roles in their respective countries' wars of independence. While modern agriculture has changed the landscape, they remain a symbol of national pride and are celebrated annually on December 6th in Argentina on El Día Nacional del Gaucho. Before heading to Southeast Asia, arguably the home of wild cattle, it would be a shame to skip the oceanic countries who also house their fair share of domesticated cattle. In 2022, New Zealand was the world's highest exporter of milk producing 7.8 billion US dollars worth for other countries. This is more than twice the money generated by both Germany and the United States, who sat in second and third place respectively. The most popular dairy breed in New Zealand is the Holstein Friesian at 47%. In 2002, the number of dairy cattle overtook beef cattle and has now risen to almost double with 6.3 million dairy cows in 2019. On the other side of the Tasman Sea, Australia also has a thriving cattle industry, concentrated mainly on the East Coast. Although this fluctuates from year to year, Australia is frequently included in the top 10 countries with the most cattle, with 24.4 million heads in 2021. Australia's cowboy culture thrives through the Stockman, a legendary figure skilled in cattle herding across the expansive outback. Originating in the early 19th century, both settler and Aboriginal stockmen have played vital roles in the cattle industry. Today, they are celebrated across the country and continue to be a vital part of Australia's agricultural fabric. Surprisingly, we still have nine species left to cover, and as we enter the Sunda Islands, we meet two of the region's most important species. The Bantang is one of the most striking animals on the list and is another animal with both wild and domestic counterparts. The Thai National Park Service estimates there are 1.5 million domesticated Bantang in Southeast Asia, which are referred to as barley cattle. As for those in the wild, the IUCN estimates there to be just 4 to 8,000 mature individuals and designates them as endangered. 
Like many of the animals we've covered, the wild and domesticated counterparts are considered by some to be separate species, whereas others consider each to be a subspecies. Regardless, these animals are quite unique, exhibiting sexual dimorphism both in size and colour. Females are smaller and chestnut in colour, whereas mature bulls are dark tan to black and those found in the wild can weigh close to 1800 pounds. The lower legs of both sexes are white and this coloration is also found on the rump. These animals are highly valued in local communities, being known for the high quality of the milk they produce, in addition to being used as draft animals for ploughing, for which they are often crossbred with regular cattle. Wild populations are found throughout Southeast Asia, where three incredibly rare animals can also be found. The Saula, also known as the Asian unicorn, is critically endangered and is found between the countries of Laos and Vietnam. The Cupre, which looks similar to the Banteng and is classified as critically endangered or possibly extinct, with any remaining individuals presumed to be located in Cambodia and Laos. And finally, the Tamaroar, or Mindoro dwarf buffalo. These animals are found on just one island in the Philippines and are characterized by horns that point straight backwards, a trait they share with two other dwarf buffalo species found in Indonesia. Anoas, or simply dwarf buffaloes, are roughly the same size as their Filipino cousins and are found in the same genus along with wild and domestic water buffaloes. Although this is subject to debate, some consider there to be two species of Anoa. The lowland Anoa is found in lowland tropical forests at up to 3,300 feet and the mountain Anoa, which is found in montane forests at up to 7,500 feet. Mountain Anoa are also said to be slightly larger and exhibit thicker fur. Younger individuals from both species exhibit a lighter coloration which darkens with age and they are thought to live between 20 to 30 years in the wild. Unlike larger buffaloes, these animals are considered solitary and are sometimes seen living in pairs or very small herds. Both species are found on the island of Celebes, also known as Sulawesi and we must travel back to mainland Asia to visit our final and largest species of wild cattle. The gaur, also known as the Indian bison, is not only one of the largest species of wild cattle, but often makes the top 10 list for the world's heaviest terrestrial animals. Most sources cite a weight between 22 and 3300 pounds for the largest bulls, which can stand six feet or more at the shoulder. Like the banteng, this species has white hair on the lower legs and develops its dark coloration with age. Younger individuals exhibit a chestnut coat, which then darkens in both males and females. Herds contain as many as 40 individuals, but usually number no more than 8 to 11. Breeding takes place throughout the year, and after a gestation period of 9 months, cows usually give birth to a single calf. Due to their size, adult gaur have few predators except the tiger, but calves can be preyed upon by doles, leopards and crocodiles. Remarkably, this gigantic creature has been domesticated and is considered by some to be a separate species, the gael. Most of these animals exist in Southeast Asia, but there is a small population in Europe located in a biosphere reserve known as Askania Nova in Ukraine which you can learn about in this video, exploring the 12 most unique national parks in Europe. Thank you so much for watching.